Hey, how's everybody doing? Continuing my Elaine Warnos series on um her her murder trial. She was considered a serial killer. Uh, she killed seven men back in 1989 to 1990. She was arrested in 91. She went on trial in 92, I believe. And I've got this Tyra Moore. Happy Halloween month to everybody, by the way. So, Tyra Moore is going to be on the stand. This is her direct. Um, and the audio is really good. I went in and tweaked because all the other audios and the video I just last did, the audio was crap, but I went in there earlier and tweaked my settings and com did some compression and stuff. So it's, it's a lot better. It's not, a, not as much atmosphere. So hopefully it's, it's good. I tested a few, a little bit of it at the beginning because I haven't even watched this whole uh, cross, well, not cross, but direct. And I'm thinking the cross is in here. Uh, I kind of skimmed, but it kept going to commercials because this is on a court TV, old historic footage. And it was kind of a, a pain to figure that out. So hopefully the, the cross is in here as well. But I've heard conflicting that either they were together three years or they were together four and a half years i guess whatever right that doesn't matter <laughs> but this trial is on her first victim uh elaine's first victim which was 52 year old richard mallory and then she ended up confessing to to the other killings but tara is an interesting an interesting character here in this scenario now like I said I'm gonna be trying to do a series on this and I found some other footage of another documentary that was done and I know everybody's watched the um, the selling of a serial killer a British I guess he's British guy had did it uh, but he had some stuff on there that was different from this other documentary I saw. So when, when I do that one, I'll bring up what he says and then what this documentary is not saying. Or they're not implying certain things because he's claiming she, you know, she was abused by these, these other men. And I don't know where the, if he how he found his evidence for that but in this other documentary that they didn't specify that they did name these other people but not not in that way but anyway um we're gonna get right into it uh this is direct of tire ty tyria uh more hopefully we don't get bombed with some goofy uh Ads. Here we go. Anyway, Pam, would you tell us your full name, please? Tyra Dooling Moore. How old are you? 29. Tell us where you're living presently in the state. Pennsylvania. And who you live with? My sister. Was there a time that you lived uh, in the state of Florida, the Daytona Beach area? Yes. You asked me if you know an Eileen Carroll Warnos, also known as Lee. Yes, I do. Did you know that individual under any other name? Uh, yes, I did. The name Lahovic, one of the names you knew her as? Yes. You know her as a, under the name Brody? Yes. You ever know her to use the name Cammy Marsh Green? Yes. How was it that you knew this woman that you described as Elaine Carol Warnos with the aliases that you, you told us about? Objection to aliases. Question. How is it that you came to know her? I met her in a bar. And did it come a point in time in, in your life that uh, you and she formed a relationship? Yes, we did. How long did that relationship last? About four and a half years. And could you describe the relationship uh, to us um, in regards to um, 
your living arrangements, um, your working arrangements, things of that nature. Well, we lived as lovers, and I, I worked quite a bit, and she worked as a prostitute. During the time that you were living with the defendant, uh, the type of employment that you primarily engaged in was what? Um, hotel work. You ever engage in prostitution? Okay. No. Uh, go ahead. You earn a salary? Yes. Went to work on a daily basis when you could find employment? Yes. Got a paycheck? Yes. Use that to support yourself and Ms. Warner? Yes. Shared in the household bills? Yes, I did. Leading, Your Honor. What did you do with the money that you made from working at the hotel? I helped pay bills. And did during that period of time you and Ms. Warnos live uh, in one location throughout your relationship? Objection leading, Your Honor. Answer the question overall. You can tell us. Can you repeat, please? During the four years that you lived together, you are always in one place or did you move about? We moved around a lot. I'd like to take you back to December the 1st of 1989. Recall where you were living at that time? At the Ocean Shores Motel in Ormond Beach. And how long had you been at the Ocean Shores Motel on that occasion? Approximately a month. And there come a time that you left the Ocean Shore Motel and moved to another location? Yes, there did. Can you tell us about when that occurred? The 1st of December. On the same day that we're talking about. Right. Now, the, during that period of time, you see Aileen Warnos on December the 1st, 1989? Yes, I did. Were you two living together at that time? Yes, we were. Where were you when you first saw her? Can you describe to us, um, are you both at home at the same time, or did you come home from work, you're going to work, or is she coming back from the location? Explain no, I, I was in, in bed, it was early in the morning when she came in, and I was still sleeping. Uh, did you have a job at that time? Yes, I did. And what time did you have to go to work? I believe it was 9 o'clock. And did you go to work on that day, did you recall? Yes, I did. Well, before you went to work, did you have occasion to wake up? Obviously. Oh, yes, Lee came in. Okay. Can you describe to us uh, what, if anything, occurred or what, if anything, you spoke about when she came in? Well, she came in and she had a car outside and said that we were going to move. And we moved that day. Where did you move? To Burley Avenue and Holly Hill. Now, when you moved, you described, if you would, uh, what type of vehicle it was that uh, you moved with. First of all, was it your car? No. Uh, did uh, you ever see that car before that day? No, I hadn't. Did you ever see that car after that day? A photograph of it. But physically, in this morning's possession of your own? No, I never saw it after that day. Hmm. <laughs> Now, before you move, did you have to get ready to move? I mean, were you expecting to move on that day? Not on that particular day, no. Were your bags packed and ready to go? There were some things packed because we had planned on moving. And can you describe to us what, if anything, occurred during the process of your moving? We took all of our possessions and put them in the car and moved them over to Burley Avenue. Did uh, the defendant, Ms. Warnos, tell you at that time where she had been? No. Were you going out before you woke up? No. Did she tell you about anything that had happened? No. Did she say anything to her, to, to you about uh, anything odd happening uh, or anything uh, horrible happening? Objection asked today, Your Honor. Answer the question. No. And was the move pretty much a, a routine move from the Ocean Shore Motel to the Burley Avenue address? Yes. Um, during that time, uh, can you tell us how you got there? Did you use this particular vehicle we're talking about? Yes, we did. Who drove the car? Lee did. Okay. Who drove the car? Lee did. 
Can you describe how she was driving? Just regularly driving. Nothing abnormal about it? No. Can you describe, if you will, please? Describe Lee Warnos as you observed her after you woke up, before you moved to the Burley Avenue from the Ocean Shore Motel. As best you can, what do you recall that morning to be like? Remember? Very busy getting stuff out of the. Uh, the motel room, moving it into the car. She seemed fine. She was able to help. You know, she helped me pack the rest of the stuff, and we both packed the car. Did she seem to you as if she had been drinking? Yeah, I knew she had been drinking. I could smell it on her. That the fact that she, you could smell alcohol on her seemed to be affecting her behavior? Not really. When you spoke to each other, did, did she seem to ask you back in a coherent fashion? You understand her speech pattern? Yeah. Was there anything about her actions that morning that you could tell this jury about that was out of the ordinary with the relationship that you and she had at that time in your life? Not that I recall. And then did you accomplish that move that morning and go to the Burley Avenue? Yes. What, if anything, did you do after you uh, got to the Burley Avenue? Did you unpack your bags? No, because I had, I had to go to work. And did uh, Ms. Warno say anything about uh, the car? How she had gotten it at that point or what she needed to do with it? No. How did you get to it? I rode our moped that we had. And who had the car? Lee did. See what Lee did with the car? In other words, was the car still at the Burley Avenue address when you left, or did she had she already driven? <laughs> well, she had to take me back up to the Ocean Shore Motel to get the moped because it was still up there. And, and did she drive you back from the Burley Avenue to the uh, Ocean Shore? Yes. And uh, during that period of time, she had any difficulty driving? No. Did she tell you anything uh, out of the ordinary about? You? How the last couple of days of life in then, or the night before? Objection leading us. Is there anything about uh, what has been going on say, within the last 24 hours of the life? No. Now, did it come a point then that you took the moped and you went off to work? Yes, I did. And how late did you stay at work that day? I believe I was working 9 to 5 at that time. And. After you got off work, where did you go? To the Burley Avenue house. At that time, did you see that same automobile again that you, 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 had, you had used to move? No. You never physically see it again after you went off as Lee took you to the hotel to pick up the moped? No. When you got home, was there anyone present at the apartment? Was it a home or an apartment? It was a a garage converted into an apartment, so I guess it was. Now, uh, was anyone there when you got there? I don't remember. I don't. I don't believe so. Did it come a point in time that evening when you saw Lee Warnos again? Yes. Can you describe how that came about? I don't remember. I I really don't remember if she was home when I got home from work or if she came in later. It may occur when she came home. Out of the ordinary. When later that evening, I know we were sitting watching TV, and she told me she had something to tell me. Can you describe how she was acting when she, uh, can you tell us what she told you? Where was she and where were you, if you remember? What were you all doing? Just watching TV? We were sitting on the floor watching TV. Okay. Were there any, uh, anything unusual going on at that time? Were they just sitting there in an apartment together watching some TV? No. Can you describe her appearance at that time? She seemed fine. Anything particularly different uh, or the same about her as when you had left her to go to work? She was the same. Same basic physical appearance? Yes. Uh, she told you that there was something that she wanted to tell you? Correct. Can you tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury how that conversation began and what transpired? We were sitting on the floor watching TV, and she just come out and said, I have something to tell you. And I asked her what, and she said that she had shot and killed a man that day. 
Say anything to her when she told you that? No, I didn't want to believe it. I was probably in awe. Did you did you say anything to her? Like, you know, believe you? Or, you know, you want to use Bulgarian I'm, shit me? I mean, you know, what's going on here? I'm what sure I probably actually, replied uh, something. Just <laughs> Did you ask her anything about what she had just told you that she had just she had shot me? I don't believe I asked her any questions about it. I might have replied something like I don't believe you or something along that line. Did she say anything else at that point? She, yeah, later she was telling me that she had put the body in the woods under a piece of rug and that she had dropped the car off up in Ormond Beach around John Anderson Drive. She tell you that the man she had shot, she had taken his car, and that was the car you used to move with? Objection, please. Did she tell you anything about the car in relationship to the man she had shot? I believe she did at one point. Her understanding based upon what she was telling you that it had been the man that had gotten shot in his car you guys had been in that day? Yes, it was. Tell you anything about why she shot the man? No. Now, during that evening, as this conversation was going on, did you continue to watch TV? Yes, I believe so. Did the defendant uh, continue to watch TV after she told you she just shot a man and taken his car? You, you had been in it? Can you repeat the question, please? I'm, I'm trying to understand what is happening in that apartment, in that garage, as you're being told by this defendant that she shot a man. You just describe that in your own words. We were just sitting around watching TV, drinking a few beers. It was That's what she typical, told typical evening. Now, when you packed up to move to the Burley Avenue, did you pretty much know what kind of articles you each own? You've been living together for how long at that point? At that point, it was approximately three and a half years. And did Ms. Warnos have any articles at that time, that evening, uh, that were not something that you had seen before? Yes. Can you describe to the jury what, how you noticed that? You made that up. Well, I knew that they didn't belong to us. Can you describe what you saw? There's only a few things that I can really remember from the particular car, because she had given me a jacket and a, and a scarf. And I, well, let's talk specifically about what you remember. Don't speculate. Try as best you can. What do you remember seeing, and what do you remember about that evening? I remember a box with a bunch of papers in it. Did you look at the papers at all or see anything or notice anything about them? I wasn't really paying attention. She was going through them and she tried to show me a piece of paper and a picture of somebody and I didn't want to look at it. Did she tell you the picture was the man she had shot? I believe she did. Did you be able to see any type of name or any documentation or personal um, identification? I remember that? seeing the name Richard on a piece of paper that she was going through. Now when she was going through these items, uh, can you describe uh, her demeanor? How was she acting? It's normal, going through, going through stuff, throwing things away and keeping things. Kind of sifting through these articles, throwing some that she wanted, some she didn't want. Right. Did you see anything else other than just the paperwork she was doing? I remember a suitcase and a jacket, and it was a, a big blanket. A comforter who was brown and tan. Can you describe whether it was a man or a woman's jacket? It was, I believe it was a man's jacket. It was a members only brand. Now, as she's sifting through these materials, she offered to show you a photograph of the man she told you she shot. Right. At that time, did she tell you anything else about what occurred between she and that man? No. Did she ever suggest in any way or? Could you, by looking at it, could you observe whether or not um, she had been injured? No, I saw no sign of injury. In the morning when you left for work, when you first saw her, or in that evening? No. 
Is there anything abnormal about interaction? No. You know what she did with the picture of the man she showed? She said to you, Chuck? No, I believe that was part of the things that she threw away. And let me show you where the mark for identification purpose as state double zero for identification. Well, that item has been uh, previously provided in the Chief Council uh, in the form of photographs of the copies. Yes, sir. Thank you. For the record, it is states double zero for identification. Ma'am, I realize that you can't see a serial number or a tag or anything on that part. Can you describe to the jury whether or not the vehicle exhibited states double zero for identification uh, when it is that you last saw a car looking like that? was in possession of Aileen Warnos. It was the car that we used to move with on December 1st. Describe anything that you recall about the car as you saw it in the possession of Aileen Warnos. I remember a, a tag that was on the front of it. It was a gator tag. It said the gators across it. And I knew it had tinted windows. I remembered that. Um, I don't remember any other specific things about it. Did it come a point in time when strike that drive for permission? It's more. How long did you remain living with the defendant after she told you she had shot this man on December the 1st, 1989? Approximately a year. At any time during the period of that relationship as lovers, as roommates, as friends, did she ever advise you that the man she had shot had done anything to her? No, she didn't. Did she ever suggest that she had been raped by this man? Objection has to answer, John. Objection over Did she ever say anything? No. Did she ever give you an explanation as to why she had shot the man? No. Did you, during that period of time, talk about many things with her? Yes, we talked quite a bit. Was this a relationship, a close relationship between you? I believe it was. She never, ever suggested that the man she told her she shot the stem of the purse and used his car to move to the Burley Avenue and done anything to her on the morning of December the 1st, 1989. Okay. Objection has to answer. Answer. No. Back on December the 1st, 1989. Did you know what type of profession Ms. Warnos was using to earn a living? Yes, I did. And during the period of time when you first met her and you began living together, did you have any other occupations as, as the mainstay of her of the way she earned a living? No. During that period of time, at the time that she told you that she shot the man on December the 1st, 1989, back to when you first met her, did she ever indicate to you that she had been beaten and raped and robbed by people that she was going out and prostituting herself to while you two lived together? No. Do you know if on December the 1st, 1989, Aileen Carroll Warnos owned a firearm? Yes. Have you ever seen her with a gun? Yes. Did she tell you why she got the gun? She said it was for her protection. Because she hitchhiked. Did she say what she would do with that gun if anyone messed with her? I don't remember. Do you see the defendant, Aileen Carol Warnos, in this courtroom today? Yes, I do. 
Point her out for the record, please. Thank you, Lady Your Honor. Please, the court, I'd like the witness to identify the name she. Ma'am, please point her out if you can. She's sitting right there. Can you describe what she's wearing? Thank you, Lady Your Honor. Thank you, Lady Your Honor. May the record reflect that the witness has identified the defendant, Aileen Carroll Warren. Nothing further, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, Mark Counsel. Thank you. Oh, it looks like we're going to get the cross here. <clears throat> I don't know. I mean, do y'all think she's telling the truth? That she didn't know crap? I mean, she'd been with Eileen four years. Three, three years at that point. She comes home and says she killed some guy. And she's got his car. A whole bunch of his belongings. I mean, I... I I know she's testifying for the prosecution, but the woman comes in and says, yeah, I killed this guy. His car's sitting outside. Let's use it to move. She had to have known it was true. I don't know. That's just my, my thoughts on it. Y'all let me know what you think so far. I mean, that's my theory on so far the testimony on direct that I think she knew. She knew that she was telling the truth. Where would she get the car? She didn't even ask, oh, where'd you get this car? The guy, you killed this guy, you got his car sitting outside, and you're saying you didn't believe her. So you didn't ask her, did you steal the car? How the hell did you get this car? We've been cruising around on a moped this whole time. I don't know. That's just my thoughts on that. Warren is June of 1986, is that correct? Yes, it is. And from June of 1986 to December of 1990, you share a home. Correct. And because of that, you observed Lee on a daily basis. Yes. You got to know her. Yes. You knew her probably better than anyone else. Right? I believe so. And you've already testified you knew uh, she was a prostitute. Correct. And you do that within a month of living with her. Correct. And you knew that she was a prostitute, as Mr. Moore pointed out, throughout the entire time that you were there. Correct. And you knew that at least three times a week she was prostituted. At least, yeah, I'd say. And you've talked about the fact that you shared in some of the uh, expenses of the home and things like that, that you work from time to time. In fact, during that four and a half years, approximately half that time you were unemployed. Isn't that true? I really don't know. Well, there were numerous times when you were unemployed. I, I wouldn't say numerous. There was a couple months at a time I would go without jobs. When you went those couple of months at a time without jobs, he supported you, didn't you? Yes. And she contributed to the household when you were working. Yes. Lee rarely told you much about work. That would be fair to say. Correct. And that was in part because you told her you didn't want to hear it. Isn't that true? Yes. You didn't want to hear it because you were jealous of her work. Is that true? I didn't want her to do it. You didn't want to share her with other men. Is that true? That's true. And... From what he did tell you, life on the road in her job was in fact dangerous. She told you that, didn't she? Yeah. And she did tell you that she'd been raped and beaten, didn't she? Pre I mean, it was before I met her that she had been raped and beaten. But... She, she did tell you that she'd been raped and beaten. Yes. And she said that that had happened on more than one occasion. Correct. In fact, she said one time she was beaten so severely that she couldn't even recognize her face. Objection to that we can establish when this occurred. Your statement. for the predicate, sir. While you were living with her, you recall her telling you of an occasion where she had been beaten very severely. Objection, Your Honor. We can establish when 
Is this supposedly happening? Also, it's hearsay. They don't look ready. Let me ask you this. She did tell you that nearly every single day that she was prostituting, somebody brought for abuse with her, didn't she? No. She told you that people were abusive and mean to her in her work. Verbally. At least one person. Verbally. Verbally abuse. Verbally abuse. This morning, you also know that we drank a lot. Yes. And that she drank most nights. And while you didn't drink as much as she did, you drank beer just about. Whenever she would have it, yes, I'd probably drink a few. You can hold your beer pretty well, can't you? Sometimes. But Lee, when she drank a whole lot, she would get kind of moody sometimes. Yes. And you could tell when she was drinking a lot. Couldn't you? Yes. Because you knew her. Right. And sometimes they drank as much as even a case in a night, didn't you? Yes. And on a couple of occasions, she would go on a binge where she would drink that much for more than one day. Correct. With just a couple hours of sleep. Right. <clears throat> but during these times, the warnings never struck you. No. Never got physically abusive with you. No. You argued with her. Yes. Has any room anymore? Right. Overall, Lee Warnus was very protective. Yes. She loved you, didn't she? Yes. She said she'd do anything for you, didn't she? Yes, she did. And she said this to you on numerous occasions. Didn't she? she even said she died for you, didn't she? Huh? Yes. She said that over and over again, didn't she? I'm sure she said it more than once. She, in fact, said it many times. Objection, Your Honor. Self-serving hearsay. Thank you very much. They have a loving relationship. Objection to the statement, Your Honor. Even in fact, you only sort these answers better going. I mean, the objectives are okay. Go ahead. It was, in fact, much more than a couple of times, wasn't it? It could have been. Do you recall getting the deposition this morning? Yes, I did. Page, please, Counselor. Page 159 and 160. What? We have a page. 159. Hey, I'm going to get you. The deposition. I understand. The deposition was given on. Uh, November 22nd, 1991, at 1.15 p.m. Do you recall that deposition? Yes, I do. And do you recall that uh, Ms. Jenkins and Mr. Nolas were present? Yes, time? I do. And do you recall that Mr. Demore was there as well? Yes. And do you recall being asked the question, and you, and I'm talking about line four, do you recall also that she said she would die for you? And your answer was, she I'm said she the court, first of all, is improper, if attempting to impeach is improper. But the answer to the question, you don't read a deposition into the rest of the question. If you were asked a question, you should give an answer. You recall the deposition? Yes, I do. You were placed under oath? Yes, I was. Yes. Just as you did here in court today. Correct. You were asked the question. You recall also. That she said, do I have any objection, Your Honor? Objection is no rule if you're reading a question. That's what you do. That is what I'm doing. And you recall also that she said, or implied me, that she would die for you. Remember being asked that question? Yes, I do. Do you remember your answer? I'm sure I answered it that she had told me that before. No, your answer was, objection, Your Honor. Yes, read the answer. 
The answer, she said that throughout our whole relationship. She said that throughout our whole relationship, too. So, you remember saying that? No, I don't, but if it's there, I said it. And it's, I'm sure she said it more than once. She said that throughout your whole relationship, didn't she? Okay. Four and a half years. Okay. And you left Lee Wernus in December of 1990. Yes, I did. And you testified that you gained this information about that, that she had said she had killed someone nearly a year before. Correct. That correct. And in December 1989, she came to you and she said, I got to tell you Right. Right. And that something was that she had shot and killed him. Correct. She also told you what she'd done with his car. Correct. Or that you saw when she brought it to the motel. Right. Okay. Yes, it was. Which she, she told you later she left him on the beach. Right. Now, he was intoxicated when she told you these things, wasn't she? Yes. And she was intoxicated the morning she first saw the Cadillac, too, wasn't she? Yes, she was. But when she wanted to tell you something, and that something was that she had killed someone, your response was you didn't want to hear about it. That could have been what I said. That is what you said, isn't it? Damn. It could be. I don't remember my exact response, but... I know I didn't like to hear about even her working, so I'm sure I didn't want to hear about something like that. And Sorry nearly a that. year later, you decided to leave. Correct. And when you did decide to leave, it was in November of 1990. I believe I left in the beginning of December. Beginning of December. And that was after you had seen a composite drawing. Is that true? Yes. And that was after you had seen a composite drawing, which you assume. Correct. And you thought you were a sister. Didn't you? I, I really don't know what I thought at that time. I know I was scared. Scared you might be arrested, Virginia. Because I knew I was driving the car when it happened when I erected. And so you left. Right. You left Pennsylvania. No. Oh, I'm sorry. You went to Ohio. Yes, I did. You left. Correct. While you were in Pennsylvania, law enforcement people contacted you, didn't they? Yes, they did. And you were taken to a motel where you spent the night with an officer. Correct. And the next day, uh, you heard from some more officers. Correct. Bruce Munster was one of those officers. Yes, he was. Jerry Thompson was one of those officers. Yes, he was. And when you got to Volusia County, you met Mr. Forsaken. Correct. And four other female officers. Correct. You were put in the Daytona Motel. Is that correct? Yes. You didn't pay for that motel, did you? No. And you were fed while you were there? Yes. You didn't pay for your food, did you? No. You were allowed to get cigarettes, beer, right? Correct. You didn't pay for those either? I believe I did buy those. The other items, your food, your motel, things like that, those were paid for by the law enforcement. I really don't know who paid for it. But you know you did. I know I didn't, correct. And you were in that room for several days. Correct. And while you were in that room, the uh, law enforcement officers wanted you to contact Lee, didn't they? Yes, they did. They wanted you to write her a letter. Correct. So that she was calling you. Correct. And they asked you to write a note and kind of told you the kind of things to put in it, right? Objection, Your Honor. Doesn't answer it if you can. I really don't remember if they told me what to write or if they just 
gave me the basic information on tell her to call you and give her the number. They didn't sit down and oh, say write these exact it. words. Right. You wrote the number. Right. But they wanted you to give her a number to call you. Correct. Better know where you were. Right. And you did that. Yes, I did. And you waited for her to call. Yes, I did. And of course she did call, didn't she? Yes, she did. She loved you. Yes, she did. And you knew it. Yeah. And when she did call the officers that were in the room, they were reporting it. Yes, they were. Of course, they were doing that with your permission. Correct. You had signed those statements and they had permission. To do Correct. That. They wanted you to ask the certain questions, didn't they? I don't recall them at well, specific questions. Okay, no. but they gave you ideas of what. They, they led you in directions while you were. I don't recall that. You recall them occasionally passing you little notes suggesting that you work on her in this way or when she's crying, you should hit her harder than those kind of things. I remember a few notes being passed, yes. Do you recall a note being passed where when she started crying, that's a good time to get her to talk about? I really don't remember that, no. I remember it might have been said to me. I don't remember it being written down, but it could have been. Okay. Oh, it might have been said to you. Was it in fact said to you, Ms. Moore? Yeah, I remember hearing it. Yeah. Objection, Your Honor. Counsel, gratuitous comment after a question. All right. And the things that they were doing, the, the hints that they were giving you, it's been awful to me. Those were so <laughs> that uh, they could get me to say what they wanted to. I really don't know. Well, you wanted Lee to say certain things. I definitely wanted Lee to say certain things. Yes, I did. You wanted Lee to make statements. Yes, I did. You wanted her to clear you, did you? Yes, I did. And in order for her to say what you wanted her to, you lied to her. Yes. You lied to her about why you came to Florida. Right. You lied to her about who you came with. Yes. You lied to her about who was paying for the room. Right. And more importantly, you lied to her about whether or not anybody was in the room with you. Yes, they did. And whether anybody was taping the conversation. Correct. Of course, the reason you did these things was to clear yourself. Yes, it was. And that's why on two different occasions, you even suggested that you might kill yourself. I don't understand your question. Can you... Well, do you recall on two different occasions during these phone conversations suggesting that you might be suicidal over this whole thing? I remember once saying that, I, why don't I just go kill myself? And the reason you did that was to get me to say the things you wanted to do, correct? I really don't know why I said it. You didn't want her to make statements to clear you. Yes, right. I did. And throughout all the conversations that she had with you, she continues to tell you how much she loves you. Yes, she did. And that she'd do anything for you. Right? Yes. That she would even die for you. Yes. She would surely want to keep you, would want to do anything to keep you from killing yourself. No, I don't know that. Now, there were several times during the conversation when Lee said uh, that she would take a fall to you. I'm going to have to object. First of all, counsel that asking self serving statement of this individual came off for that purpose. Your Honor, I would object to the speaking objection. Objection, Judge. Here's a note in it, and I won't hear what he has to say, and then I'll just I'll sustain your objection. <laughs> Yes, sir. You were worried during these phone conversations that we might not do. Yes, I was. I was very scared. But clearing you to you meant more than just me saying you didn't have anything to do with the homicide. I, yeah, I believe that I needed her to say more. 
You wanted her to say that you didn't do it and that she did all of it by herself. That could basically be what I wanted, yes. So her saying that you were totally innocent, that you didn't have anything to do with any of this, that wasn't enough? No. Eventually, Lee indicated that she was prepared to make a statement, right? Yes. And after 11 calls over three days, you got what you want. Objection, Your Honor. If no credit, just name the objection. There were, in fact, you were in the hotel room for several days. Yes, I was. And there were at least 10 phone calls a day, right? I uh, know there was quite a few. And it was only at the end of those calls, on the last one, in which you got what you wanted. Isn't that true? I, I believe so, yes. Now, you had conversations and meetings with law enforcement officers after November 1991. After November of 1991. Well, let me help you. Sometime after you got back up north, I don't want that to be left. Judge, I'm going to counsel for two of these and helping the witness. All the judge, yeah, I'll just read information. Yes, I'm sorry. When you got back up north about a month later, you heard from Mr. Munster, did you? Correct. And at one point, uh, Mr. Munster actually helped you. Know, outside the scope of direct, was so far, they didn't do it. Your Honor, with all the respect, I think it makes a bias and interest of this witness. Uh, his objection was beyond the scope of direct. I sustained the objection. Yes, sir. May we approach the bench or at least make an argument outside the presence? We step to the jury room a moment. The jury is out of court from your honor. Your honor, I have a few more here for the argument. Oh, here, Chair. You have some objections later. Your Honor, simply put, bias and interest is always in there with the subject. Are you a few more removed? If we wish. Maybe we just work with the subject. That's the first time I've seen that, them asking the witness to leave. Not that I've seen a million trials, but what do y'all think about the jury being filmed? I've never seen that before. Yeah, it's not like I've seen a million trials, but... Your Honor, this specific line of questioning has to do with the bias or the interest of the witness. It relates to, one, a movie deal situation that's been involved in this case and other things place to hurt. You know, you've done yourself in the head of her before. You can do all you can do. 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 Well, that's why I know that you know, was meeting the end of it, and I think that that's an area we should explore to expose the bias and interest of this witness might have for the senior saying that she did. So, so what counsel wants to do is go outside the scope of the record. He wants to try to bring in hearsay statements of what somebody told her when the objection was anyway, what she did subsequently. Counsel wants to ask those questions. He can put them on, do this quicker than in case she can establish the relevancy of it. Not do the statement of the Bible, but the mission of the scope was to that thing. Seventy first, nineteen eighty nine. What she did two years later is, is not viable under the scope. I, I agree with, and I also agree with the statement made by counsel. Well, if, if I saw that in the objection is beyond the scope of direct examination at this time, you have to freely call this with the city. Well, Your Honor, if I just may respond to that for the record. Sorry, I want you to protect your record in every respect. So what I'm suggesting is protecting the record more than you try a lawsuit. Yes, sir. What I'm suggesting is we start trying to also. Now go ahead and make your suggestion. Your Honor, the whenever the bias and interest I already ruled on that, I don't need any more. Whenever they are present, it can never be beyond the scope. Can I rule? You won't be the Madam Court Reporter, do you need what I said? <laughs> Damn. It's time we start trying a lawsuit here. Before that, where I sustained the objection. At least that was my best recollection. I sustained the objection. It's beyond the scope of direct examination. 
Anything further now to the record? Can we get on to all One quick thing, Your Honor. Just so that we understand that Mr. Miller doesn't try to violate Your Honor's order. The area relating to bias and interest pertaining to matters that happened subsequently to the time period that Mr. DeMore spoke about is that is Your Honor not allowing us to get into that? talking about the direct examination of that or witness as far as within the book. And and those matters, even if they relate to bias or interest. I have stated that objection. I think we're going to say what we're going to do again. No, I mean, okay. we would respectfully object on a confrontation for that as well. Thank you. Bring the witness back and then do it. Thank you. This is a tough judge. Up north, on the way down to Daytona, from uh, up north, I'll be down by up before you get to the hotel. You prepared a list of the places you lived with Miss Morris over the four and a half years that you were with, didn't you? Yes, I did. And you also indicated on that list whether or not you were employed. Correct. And when you were in the motel room, you were in that room, uh, one of the people that was in that room with you when they all was Rosemary Giansanti, is that correct? Correct. And Ms. Giansanti, in fact, had courted you into the courtroom today, didn't she? I believe she was behind me. I believe one of the officers escorted me in. Okay, but she was behind you and came in and sat down for the trip. Yes. And you've had many discussions with Rose Giannisanti, haven't you? Yes. And you've discussed testifying here today, Mr. Giannisanti, haven't you? No, I don't believe so. I just got in here. I mean, on prior occasions. About me coming down here? Yes. Yes, she knew I was coming down. And you talked to her about the kind of things that you were going to have to testify to, didn't you? I really don't remember. Come on. There you do. Your Honor, in light of the court's uh, ruling, I have no further questions. What? Any redirect? Yes, sir. Please, court. We're going to have some redirect now. Ms. <coughs> Moore, counsel for the defendant asked you about a composite that you've seen as one of the reasons why you left. Bennett. Correct. Now, that composite was a composite of two women that had been seen in an automobile um, totally unrelated to the Cadillac. Isn't that true? Objection, Your Honor. Same objection. Now, let me ask this. When you were describing the automobile that you said wrecked, what car were you uh, describing? Objection, Your Honor. Um, Your Honor, that door is wide open. No, it's wide open. Uh, having concern at the, the time of hearing for help. Your Honor, I, 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 please, court, defense counsel has, has opened this door. Your Honor, I object to the speaking objection. Right. Your I can speak it up in front of you. This is not a leading and easy no. legal issue, man. We have a longer or two outside the jury's process. I think we do need to have the jury go out. <laughs> Oh my God! What I'm concerned about now is that I, I think we've reached a stage where we're on some very thin ice in regard to the budget for the matter, and I think we ought to hear it out right now. Even though doors have been opened, I have been very particular. Testimony should be allowed until a rule is made, so you know which way we're coming. Judge, yes. My, my point, Judge, is counsel specifically asked questions to elicit the testimony regarding a composite and wrecking of another car. Um, that's the defense counsel yeah. brought that out on cross examination and answered the response. That's what I'm saying. I think we need to resolve the William Brew problem right now before we proceed further. Because, you see, you people have had the benefit of discovery, I think not. But I think we're skirting into William Brew. I believe this must be somebody else's car. Judge, at a minimum, I would like to at least, now counsel was very quick to let it be left in the jury's mind that maybe this witness had wrecked Mr. Mallory's car. He didn't bother to, to clear that up. Why don't so we have a right to clear that up? Yes, sir. 
No problems getting it all resolved right now, Your Honor, but how long do you think it's going to take? And we've already heard a number of, you know, we had a hearing on the 3rd and the 10th. Is there going to be more than you want on the record? Are you satisfied with the record that you so We surely are not satisfied with the record at this point. Uh, I was afraid of that. Bring the jury out. We're going to discharge it in 30 minutes. Then we'll bring it back in. I assure you we'll be ready to proceed in 30 minutes. We have a day that is in the record before. If I have to keep going yeah. for re hearing after re hearing after re hearing, I'll keep well, with all due respect, it's not a matter of reading here, Your Honor. It's a matter of the specific profit the state needs to make in honor for the opportunity. How could this them film in the jury? Oh, crap. Your Honor, the court's yes, permission. The jury comes in. Yes, it's two matters before the court. One is, uh, as I understand it, Dr. Bordini would like to see Ms. Warner this weekend. He was indicated Saturday and Sunday. The doctor was requested by the state in order to assist the state in this case. Your Honor previously ruled um, when the state originally requested an expert in this case that uh, Dr. Bernard was appointed as a court witness. My understanding of Your Honor's ruling, and Your Honor will correct me if I'm wrong, with regard to Dr. Bordini was that his role was to assess the testing that was provided and assist the state. I did not understand Your Honor's ruling to be that the state was getting another uh, expert in this case. I cannot agree with But my understanding was that his role was to assist the state, not in the role of a witness. That's the way he has to do it. If his role then is as bad of a witness, then we would request, if there's some additional matter that can come up with regards to jail records and so on, that Ms. Wernus have an expert appointed from Volusia County. She does not have such an expert. We've done it, and we're not delaying the trial. Won't delay the trial, but just if we we need somebody to do it. Dr. Prop. We'd like Dr. Prop. That's a shock and surprise. That there are, as the court noted previously, there are already two psychologists appointed at that. We would recommend the court uh, Dr. McMacher, that's a uh, well qualified psychiatrist, medical doctor. But might be able to assist the defense psychologist as opposed to just another run of the mill psychologist. Well, Your Honor, I, I don't mean to be state as what defense state, but uh, <laughs> I don't think Dr. Kropp, a third psychologist, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving it up to you, whatever you want to get. Judge, let me just say this. We're well, not stopping the trial. We don't want to stop the trial, but under the rule, we are entitled to an expert from Volusia County. You are exactly correct. That will be granted. Fair deal. And we would request Dr. Kropp. So he can come around at night or whatever it is, but not stop the trial for seeing this late day. Again, Your Honor, we're not stopping the trial. Do you use games or do you use uh or do you want to you want it? Yeah. We'll be prepared to proceed. Your Your Honor is granting a motion. Of course. And I'll get you an order. Uh judge. Yeah, to respectfully object to the appointment of Dr. Bordini. That's fine. Uh, that noted, I wouldn't be all surprised. I didn't think you'd let it get through <laughs> without objecting. I made the order last week because you haven't signed it yet. The second thing, Your Honor, relates to a proffer that we would like to make. As, as Your Honor heard earlier, uh, there was an effort by Mr. Miller to ask certain questions pertaining to bias and interest on the part of the witness. With an objection by the state as it being beyond the scope, the defense argued that bias and interest is always within the scope of cross examination under the confrontation clause. Your Honor uh, sustained the objection. And, right. and, and like to... now, I think if you resolve the reason that I did that, because you're getting votes and some other law matters, and uh, I told you we not go into it, so we had a proper and proper make it. You all resolved uh, that matter, right? We, we resolved the other matter, the Williamsburg related matter for now. And how far do you want to go with this? You make a proffer now. Yeah. This is a problem with regard to bias and witness as regard to this witness independent of the other issue. This right. proffer deals with the fact that this witness was approached concerning movie deals regarding Ms. Warren's. This witness was informed of that by the one involved in this case, that this witness agreed to be engaged with that at one point, uh, that the name of an attorney was given to her, that she called Agent John Sampi and asked the agent about this attorney, uh, the defendant attorney, not with the state attorney's office, related to this movie issue, um, and it goes to the witness's state of mind. There's a lot I could say on it, but that's 
what, what kind of frame are we talking about? We're talking to a movie actor or somebody or author? Or What's the credit? Account? We're talking about January 1992. Yeah, Jan January 1991 through. Yeah, well, Your Honor, uh, in, in earnestness and privilege of this officer, this court, I would respectfully, in abundance of caution, say that anything that they have in court deems relevant to bias prejudice, including movie deals up until the day the witness testified in May. All right, now, May, I, I'm going to be trying to let it in now that we resolve that other thing. I was skating on some ice. To be honest with you, I got a signal from counsel. The other counsel. The other counsel. But yes, we were there where I thought we were. And that's the reason that's not the trial. Well, you they resolved. didn't know where we were. We were, but you got it resolved. Yes, sir. I, I'm yes, sorry. Sir. Just check with me and I'll let you know. Right. So I think it was all right. I, I believe that it would be, we will let you go into that now. It was skirted in this other area where I was very concerned and I wanted justice to be done correctly. And I think it was safe and you could go into it now. I think, yeah, I was going to say the other area, I think we've all figured out and we'll deal with this area. That's right. And then this would be in front of the jury? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You can plot right now. Yeah, Your Honor, you are. Um, there's one of the things that we not not lose an objection. Part of the reason there's been such an interest in a movie is because the defendant killed seven men. If you'd only kill one, well, I've only heard about one. Yes, sir. They're all heard about here. I, I realize so that. Far. But proper redirect after cross on a movie deal would get into why there's a movie deal. We're not going to do that because we're getting into the Williams rule matter, but we'd like to reserve those type of redirect questions, right? For instance, why the composite was done, why it scared her with the composite was done for a later time, not considered to have waived it. We're staying away from it now because of Williams rule problems. Even though we believe it should be admissible, we don't want to push the issue at this point because we can reserve it. That's fine. Thank you. I, I think that's fair. Is that right? All right, with the defense. That's okay. To, to reserve it, I'll be honest. We would be there right. that. Yeah, we yeah actually, have an answer. Actually, just we would reserve the right to call this case as well. And if you can tell her at, at the end to either leave us a number where she could be reached, or if that's unacceptable to Miss Chan, reach to us. We can have her be seen in the defense office with the defense and call her in our case. All right. Yes. Then bring on the. Uh, Jury, we have the witness. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Ms. Morris, uh, we were talking sometime before about uh, after you got back up in the morning, after you had left the, the Daytona area, after you'd been in the motel. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, you recall about a month after getting up in the morning. You heard from investigator Bruce Musk. Correct. And it was in late January to mid February when you first heard from Mr. Musk. I believe it was the beginning of the earlier part of January. The earlier part of January? Yes. And when he contacted you, Judge, can we clear something up? Counsel's asked, don't be interrupting counsel. First time this witness contact, you've been asking us to. When Mr. Munster first met her and in official capacity to investigate the case or in some other matter? Okay. The first time that you spoke with Mr. Munster after you returned from Daytona, you were in the motel. That's when that's when yeah, you spoke with him on the phone. And at that time he suggested getting you a lawyer, right? Correct. And that lawyer's name was Mr. Bradshaw. Yes. And that lawyer's purpose, uh, he wanted you to talk to him yeah, about. In your honor, as to hearsay, as to what Mr. Mosby told you. Your honor, it goes to the witness's state of mind, not early. Right. Uh, be the proof of the charge. Go ahead. Uh, Based upon the conversation. Yes, I think she's. Well, your honor, it's the court Go ahead. That it's not hearsay. Go ahead. That in case uh, someone came to you about. In movie deals. Right. 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 And Mr. Bradshaw was assisting Mr. Munster in his book and movie deals, right? I know he was the, an attorney that 
And Mr. Munster had spoken with. Right. And Mr. Munster was asking if you wanted to get in with him. Right. Asked me if I would like to use the same attorney, yes. Okay. And Mr. Munster is an investigator, is that correct? Correct. A law enforcement. Right. Damn. Now, ultimately, uh, you ended up calling Rosie and Santi about that, didn't you? I believe so. Ms. Jean Santi, we spoke to her before. She is, in fact, an agent with the Florida Department of Law. Is she not? Yes, she is. And she's one of those individuals that was in the motel room. Correct. And Ms. Jean Santi, uh, you, you like to talk to her about things like that. She's somebody you trust. Correct. And you call her and ask her opinion on the book. Correct. And when you did that, you spoke with her about uh, some monetary decisions. Something that, yeah, it was mentioned. In fact, the figure mentioned $50,000, right? That could have been, yes. That's nothing. Wow. Not oh, crap. <laughs> Now, you've already testified that you trusted Rose G and Son, and that you, you like her, didn't you? Or you still do, right? Yes, sir. To consider her a good friend, she's been very helpful with throughout this. Yeah. Um, Y'all have had dinner together and things like that. Yes. And when you came to the deposition that we spoke of earlier in November of this year, uh, she accompanied you to that as well, did she not? Correct. And that was a short report. Correct. And she had picked you up at the airport on that day. Yes, she did. And again, she was here with you today. Yes. Yeah, at this moment. Yes, sir. Thank you. Fifty thousand dollars. That's it. I know where the book is. It's crazy. Thank you, Ryan. Movies that make millions. Damn. More, let me take you back to a discussion that you were having with Mr. Miller some time ago about an automobile of a friend. Let me ask you, ma'am, I can show you what is the one of the exhibit states PP for identification. I ask you if you can recognize that automobile. Yes, I can. Is that the automobile you were referring to as the car that was wrecked when you and Ms. Warnos uh, were in it sometime yeah. in July of 1990? Yes. And, ma'am, let me show you what you previously identified as states double zero for identification. I'll also show you what has been entered in as evidence, as states 13 in evidence. I ask you if you recognize the vehicle contained in those photographs. Yes, I do. Okay, with the exception of the gator tag not being on the vehicle in States 13 that you described as what you saw on December the 1st, 1989. <laughs> I meant to say December 13th, 1989, if I miss December the 1st, 1989, excuse me. Is there anything about those cars that in any way resembles what is the car in States PP for identification? No. Talking about two different automobiles, aren't we? Correct. And this is the car you were referring to that you had been driving in the company of Miss Warnos when it was wrecked. Correct. And that was sometime in July of 1990, wasn't it? Yes. In fact, even after that <laughs> wreck, some composites came out that scared you that were generated from the wreck that you and Ms. Warnos had had in the car of Jeff Chandler State PP. That's an overrule. Isn't that true? Yes, sure. it is. Okay. And that was one of the reasons, in addition to others possibly, of that you let us possibly the defendant. There's an overrule. Isn't that true? Yes. And as a fact, those composites came out months after the car wreck. Jeff Chandler answered leading him. Yes. In fair to say, at least about a year after Mr. Mallory had been murdered. Objection. Wow. Correct. Wow. Now, during the time that 
the defendant, and you were living together. Did she ever come back to the apartment and discuss with you that she had been physically abused by any of her customers, that she was prostituting herself? No. But she did discuss with you verbal abuse by them. Yes. And that was constant. She talked about that. Correct. She was getting sick and tired of the verbal abuse she was getting out on the highway from people who weren't accepting her proposition. Did the answer to her? Rephrase your question. Did she tell you why she was getting sick and tired of the verbal abuse? What was happening to her? Section overruled. I really don't understand your question. <laughs> In the context of the four and a half years you described, you and this defendant lived together. She told us that she never once came in and told you that she had been physically abused by any of the customers or people that she had dealt with. Isn't that true? Yes. And during that four and a half year period, you saw nothing from a physical basis of viewing her, with the exception of one time, I believe, when she got hit by a car on the highway on her elbow. Objection. She had been never hurt by anyone. Isn't that true? Yes. And you would have observed. If she had been physically beaten up by someone, once you you saw each other whenever she was home. You're on a meeting from seven. I'm very afraid you Did you have occasion to see her when she came home after her soirees out the hook? Yeah. Objection, Your Honor. Rephrase that. Did you have an opportunity to see her after she would go off for some period of time and then come back home? Yes. And you knew that when she was going back home, she was doing what, man? Objection, leading, Your Honor. That's not leading rules. Do we have the running objection to leading questions? Yes, sir. They're noted. Did you know what Ms. Warnos' purpose was when she was leaving your home to go out on the highway, what she intended to do? Ask an answer, Your Honor. Yeah. Answer if you can. Yes. But you didn't know she intended to kill Richard Mallory on December 1st, 1989. Objection, Your Honor. He did that. And we have a curative instruction now. Disregard the last question. Now, Mr. Miller suggested to you that Ms. Warnos got moody when she drank. That's not all she got when she drank, was it? Objection leading, you know. That's cool, Isn't that true? No, she was definitely a different person. In what way was she a different person when she drank as opposed to when she wasn't drinking? She was, I mean, she was very sweet when she was sober, but when she was drinking, she was just, was, more outgoing and like to talk abusive to me more. I mean, it seems like that's when we fought more was when she was drinking. Have you ever seen her when she was drinking become aggressive towards another person? No. Did you ever see her get in a fight in the bar? Objection has to answer, Your Stay. Have you and Miss Warnos ever been in a bar out drinking together? Objection. When after she was drinking, she got in physical fights with other individuals. Objection, you're not sustained. No, I don't ever remember seeing her fight with anybody, no. Now the telephone call that Mr. Miller referred to. You were scared, weren't you? Yes, I was. But you hadn't done anything wrong. Correct. And you wanted to make sure that the police knew that you had not been involved in the shooting of Richard Mallory. Objection leading, Your Honor. What did you want the police to know about what you knew about Richard Mallory shooting? I wanted them to know that I had nothing to do with it. What did you want them to know about who did it? I definitely wanted them to know who did it, that it wasn't me. Did you try during those telephone calls to get the defendant to tell the truth to the police? Objection, Your Honor. He did, did. When you were speaking with the defendant, who was doing most of the talking during those telephone calls? She was. And isn't it true that the defendant constantly asked you to lie for her? Objection, Your Honor. Uh, Do we in fact not know? The state uh, will sustain the objection now. What is it? Can you tell this jury how many times it was that Aileen Warren was over the three-day period that she telephoned you at the hotel, asked you to lie for her? Objection. If she can answer the question, go ahead. It was quite a few times. What, if anything, did you respond to her over and over again when she asked you to lie for her? 
that I would not lie for her. And when she told her that you wouldn't lie for her, did she tell you that it was mistaken identity, that the police had the wrong woman? Yes, she did. Did she ever suggest to you during any of those three days of telephone calls to your hotel that she had been raped or harmed in any way by Richard Mallory? No, she didn't. Did she ever suggest anything other than she wanted you to lie for her and that it was mistaken identity? That Richard Mallory had done anything to provoke an attack by her on him? Objection, Your Honor. Did she, ma'am? No. Oh, crap. It isn't a fact that in any conversation you had with Detective Munster, he let it be known to you that if there was any type of deal that he and nobody in law enforcement could ever get one of these things. Re redirect, Your Honor. You ready? Okay. Isn't that true that he told you that they could get one red cent? Yes, I believe he said that. And isn't it true that you told him you wanted nothing to do with the movie deal? That you didn't think it was right for anybody to get a penny? At a point in time, yes, I did. Have you ever taken one cent from anyone involving a movie deal or the knowledge you have of this case or the story or your life with Aileen Warren? Since the first day that you met with police officers and told them that she had told you about shooting Richard Mallory? No, I haven't. Have you ever went out and sought people for money? No, I haven't. You've had plenty of opportunities, though, haven't you? Objection, Your Honor. Isn't it true that you wanted to be left alone and to be able to live your life? Objection, Your Honor. I'm going to understand. So then the defendant wrote to you and offered to pay you money, didn't she? Yes. And she wanted to be involved in a movie deal to sell her story. Objection. Didn't she? Isn't that what she told you in her letter? Yes, it is. The last thing you objection, but the last question you asked, you asked him to. When you, when you asked him all, it's definitely. Wow. Yeah, they're killing me with that. <laughs> So when you told Aileen Warno said you went live for her, she then tried to come up with it was a mistake. Correct. Thank you very much. All a big mistake. Isn't that what you told me? It was a fall mistake, a case of mistaken identity. Your Honor, I object to constantly. What did she tell you about what it was when she was talking about a mistake? She said it was a mistaken identity, that they had the wrong person. Did she tell you what she would do to the authority if they couldn't come up with some evidence to tie her into it? I believe she put it that she would have a big lawsuit on them. Lawsuit happened? Yes. And objection, Your Honor. Just try to find out your <laughs> they keep moving the podium, killing me. You had just testified more that uh, the discussions about the book and movie deal uh, that you had with Mr. Munster or that you wouldn't get one red cent, or that no one would get one red cent. Isn't that what she just testified to? Objection, that's not what she testified to. She testified to the Objection, Judge. Okay. In fact, the discussion was that only a portion of it would go to someone else. Isn't that true? I really don't. I know that he said that they wouldn't get any money out of it. Mr. Munster told you that? Correct. Okay, but he asked you if you wanted to give a portion Correct? Correct. And do you recall having a conversation with Rosie and Sandy where you, you said to her, you know what I could do with $50,000? Do you recall saying that? No, I don't. She'd blow it. And in fact, if Ms. Gina Sonny says that she did say that, she was exactly acting wrong from property and the objection. <laughs> Regarding the statements on the phone, in fact, we weren't as did tell you several times that she acted in self-defense. Did she not? I don't recall that. 
you don't recall? No. Okay. No questions, Ron. I just didn't see, please. Yes, sir. I believe that you will uh, make sure we're able to fix the We will be asking, Your Honor, that she remain in town for a few days and she may be reached through the State Attorney's Office of Count to me. Thank you. Wow. What do y'all think? I mean, I think, I think she. She knew the whole time. How many stolen cars did this woman have? And she wrecked one of them. I think she made a deal with the prosecution. They did not uh, charge her for, with anything. They didn't charge her with nothing. And as far as the movie deal goes, somebody made money off that. And it's sad because they're going to only offer her $50,000 for her side of the story. I don't know. That's kind of crazy. But she she was never charged charged in this. And um, she probably should have been because I think you, you guys can let me know what you think. I think she knew. This woman showing up with all these different vehicles. And they're out joyriding in them. I don't know. That's what I think. But anyway, yeah. I wanted to add uh, to that before I completely peace out that I think when she saw the composite drawings, she's like, oh, shit. I better I better call somebody and say something. And let them know. Hey, she told me, but I didn't believe her. She killed some guy. And this was a year after she got the, the after uh she, the first car it was richard M mallory she tells him yeah i killed this guy the car's sitting outside she's got all his stuff coats clothing paperwork oh, oh she just says i didn't believe him that was all crap she knew and then there were seven other guys and there was more vehicles involved it wasn't just that Mr. Malley's car. And plus, she wrecks this other car. And I think that's why the prosecution uh, didn't want them bringing it up. I don't even know why the defense was bringing it up. Because she was driving it, and it was from a, a different victim. And this particular trial was just based on Richard Malley. Uh, Mallory, I apologize. Um... So I think they were just wanting to focus on that and because they were going to charge her at, at another date for these other crimes. And, uh, obviously, she ended up uh, confessing to, to, the other, to the other crimes. Now, I didn't want to speak too much through that. I wanted to just listen to all of it. Um, <clears throat> like I said, I hadn't heard her speak before. Other than just brief little clips in some of these documentaries I've I've watched over the past couple of days. But there's other uh, clips where she's been accused by Elaine uh, that she was uh, taking all the money, blowing it all the time. And I think that's why the defense was asking her, well, hey, how much did you work? Were you helping pay bills? Well, isn't it true that you didn't work all the time? And then she's like, well, maybe a few months at a time. Over four years, she'd work a little bit. According to Eileen, Ty would work a little bit and then get fired or she'd quit her job. But she'd want to go party every day and spend all that money. Now, they didn't they didn't really go in depth in that. So I haven't listened to Arlene's testimony and I am going to go over that as well and get, get the better audio. Because um, I think every one of them are crap, crap audio. But so I'll do some tweaking on that. But let me know what you guys think about her. Did she know? And I guess I need to do a little research. And I don't know if I can even find it. Did she get money out of the movie deal? And we know there was a big conspiracy, and I don't even think it was even a conspiracy that a couple of the police officers were, they were already 
after they right after they arrest her, this movie deal is coming out because you know, obviously because they brought it up in the trial. So everybody was just honing in <laughs> and gonna get whatever they can out of it. And one of the victims said that they she basically didn't mind. She says, "Well." That nobody got killed for it if they're going to make money off that because she was killing these people for for money, right? I, I remember one of the the victims' family members had had said that in something I watched last night or something. But anyway, um, I guess that's it. I covered about all of, all of what I think. Uh, I think she knew about it the whole time. The composite drawings came out. She was scared and wanted to cover her own ass. And the prosecution probably just made her a deal. Well, I'll just testify against her and you won't be charged with anything. But she knew about it and she probably should have been charged because she should have come forward on the first victim and the other ones wouldn't have been killed. She said, oh my God, she's pulled up in this car and saying she killed this guy? No, she's la la la. All right, we got a car. It can help us move. I, I, you know, I, I don't, I don't understand it. I mean, they could have, she could have called immediately and she would have been arrested with the vehicle right then and there. I mean, this was like 1992. Wasn't that long ago. Well, kind of was. And what do y'all think about the jury being in the footage? That was just, just really odd to me. Uh, the jury being in there, but. Yeah, it's a shame. Uh, I'm going to go over more of this. I know there's a lot a lot with this case and a lot with her, with her her psychosis and should should they have uh, executed her when she was clearly crazy and, and uh, mental and all of that good stuff. But um, again, thank you. If you made it to the end, thank you for joining me. And have a great day.